welcome in to Garbage Time Fantasy Football Podcast. I am your host, Rob, joined by these fine assortment of gentlemen here, Joe, JJ, and Ryan. Um, today On today's show, we are going to be doing an AFC East breakdown, but apologies right away. We are also in the middle of our new startup dynasty draft. So there's a chance that some of us may become distracted during the show. But since this is the garbage time fantasy football podcast, that's uh completely on brand for us. So yeah. You mean like for how much of a fucking homer JJ is now Justin Fields and David Montgomery on his team? Look, he's got a lot of faith in that Bears team, all right? He does, obviously. It may be hey. misguided faith, but faith nonetheless. Don't that's question a- the chance. That's why he went on the Irish Bears podcast, I guess. Much more of a homer than any of us. I'm proud of it. It's all right. Zach Wilson's proud still out there for our uh, dynasty draftability, and I guess we'll go over him on the AFCE show tonight, too. Indeed, sir. Indeed. Any news in this slow cycle <laughs> as we're looking at the draft board right now? I can't think of any. I can't either. I got to go all the way to the top. This, this is the Ooh, he's bringing up first. the stat sheet. Oh, yeah. Stats are around. While you're pulling that up too, Ron, is there anything else going on around uh, our podcast that you should tell the listeners about? I feel like because you asked me that, I should know. And <laughs> I don't know. So if there is something, maybe you should just tell them. Um, tonight we'll have another MMA episode from Ryan and Casey listed, and they have a special guest host on tonight. I've already listened to the episode. I can tell everyone that episode is absolutely fucking fantastic. So if you're into MMA, listen to that tonight. You can do that on our Garbage Time FF website. You can do it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever anywhere else they're offered, and I'm sure we'll get it on some other venues too. So that's something else to consider. Um, JJ did an absolute phenomenal job with the – uh, Irish Bears podcast this past weekend. I snuck in there and uh, gave him some nice little questions to bust his balls. It, it worked a little bit, not as well as I thought it would, but go give them a listen too. It was a good show. Um, I think besides that, we're going to have, like I said, the AFC East episode that we're currently doing right now up. So that'll be yeah, good. Uh, the MMA podcast is the Garbage Time Presents the MMA podcast. Um. And for all for everyone listening, we might be switching to a new recording service where you will actually be able to see our lovely faces. And so go subscribe to our YouTube. Perfect for the YouTube. Perfect for the YouTube. Um, so go subscribe to our YouTube page, uh, Garbage Time Fantasy Football, and be prepared. That may be happening within the next week you'll get to see more than just my one minute rant when i wasn't on the last episode and mostly i don't believe he's going to record from a dungeon but we'll see (laughs) i don't that's not where he normally talks to us from i don't know what kind of crazy slave dungeon he has going on down there um i'm fearful for his outside activities but maybe when we get to 100 followers i'll actually give you a tour of the dungeon Ooh, all right there we go now we got motivation. I'm holding you to that. We get a hundred followers on YouTube. You're, oh. you're in the dungeon for the YouTube people. Also like for how, future episodes. I like how JJ and Ryan are just staying quiet during all this ridiculousness that we're spewing out right now. They're just sitting there like yeah. these two people. They talk well, so much. Well, well, JJ's on the road. He's bringing the podcast to Vegas right now. So, yes, I am. I am in 110 degrees, Las Vegas. So I'm hiding inside right now, and to the conclusion of this podcast, I'll be cracking a beer in the pool. So That's right. And uh, Ryan's hiding downstairs from his wife and child, so. Yeah, I had to throw on the headphones because he's kind of having a meltdown right now. Oh, so, no. Yeah. Poor guy. He gets, it, gets it from his mother. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she doesn't listen to this. Ryan yeah, okay. will be in the doghouse. Ryan will be in the doghouse. <laughs> I'd be shocked if she even downloaded an episode. 
Hey, she's wow. a nice lady. Stop talking about her like that. Oh, it's my turn in Dynasty. So you're gonna to make take over. I got to make a pick. Oh, what is there to God. talk about? You're just got to make your pick, and then you're going to get right back into it anyway. I got to think of who I want to. Oh, wait. Is it my turn? No. Oh, no. no, that was no. Right. So get, get in the AFC East mode then. You can have your pick an... after. I forgot to get rid of the old notification. I'm sorry. By you the way, we're doing our faster. dynasty draft on Sleeper. <laughs> so all that shit talking when you're talking about Sleeper, right. actually, we do like it. We, we do like Sleeper. The app is pretty nice. Uh, all right. So, yeah, we'll jump right into the AFC East before we get even more off track about dungeons and wives and dog houses and such. Um it will start. Well, the first person on my list here is the Buffalo Bills, so we're going to go with that because I'm the host. I run this bitch. Ooh. Ooh. This is a rated R episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. We are. Oh, shit. JJ's on the clock. Oh, with CeeDee Lamb and Travis Etienne off the board. Ew. Ooh. Travis Etienne. That's a little he's early. Going, he's going rookie. I mean, Maybe after his rookie year, but just I wouldn't want him for this year. That's it doesn't matter. He's got Patrick oh. home. So oh Terry good, McClure. Good. Oh now I'm on the clock. Oh, oh, JJ. Oh. We really are just are not getting into this AFC episode quick. <laughs> so make, make your damn pick now so we can I'm get into on, it. I'm Joe, thinking. Joe, we're gonna talk about the Jets, all right? Relax. No, all right. is that what we're bills. gonna lead off with then? The Jets, or are we gonna go right into the Bills? All right, you know what? We're going to the Jets. I'm jacking this show right now while he's making his pick, okay? Oh. All right. So I'm going to start with Ryan and JJ. What do you guys think uh, Wilson's outlooks are for this season? Uh, obviously a lot of upside. I like what the, the Jets did um, in the offseason, beefing up the line with Vera Tucker, and obviously Beckton is a beast. Mm-hmm. So they added some skill position players with Corey Davis, drafted Elijah Moore. So they uh, – and then obviously they drafted Michael Carter too and catch the pass. So they really have put him in a position where he can be successful. Um, obviously one of the big headlines of the off season for the Jets quarterback situation is they don't have that veteran there to kind of help Zach Wilson, you know, give him that experience and insight that like someone like Fields is getting from Andy Dalton and Nick Foles. That's so, true. And I, w- I wouldn't mind Nick Foles in our backfield. So that would be fine. That's right, Ron. Scroll backfield? down because we're doing the Jets now. <laughs> you said this was your podcast and you run this bitch. I no, I had to make bitch. a pick. It's I'm the captain. Garbage. Yeah, but no, JJ, I really do agree for you. And I think the Jets are building the correct dynasty team doing it this way, building young, building around their offense. And I think uh, Zach Wilson is going to be a, have a potential good year. I actually ran some stats for him before we get to Ron's spreadsheet. So I will go over those because I am the captain of the show. Um, I see him having a season kind of uh, – I, I, I don't know if he'll be the top rookie quarterback this year, but with the added game this year, I think he'll have something like 3,950 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 18 interceptions. I think it's going to be a very good rookie year for him. Um, I think he'll also have four rushing touchdowns to add because he's actually a pretty good rushing quarterback. Um, maybe 270 yards rushing too. So I see him actually having a very successful rookie season also because that offensive line is beefed up and he's going to have a good presence around him and a lot of weapons. Looking at Ron's uh, stat sheet here, it looks like he, if he had this kind of season, I think he'd be pretty pumped about that. So, what is Michael, I think he Are throws, we talking uh, about Michael Carter? <laughs> I was talking about Zach Wilson. Oh. Yeah, I think, uh, I think they have to throw the ball a lot. I mean, their defense is good, but I think they're going to end up have to throw themselves back into games a little bit. Uh, I don't. I don't think the numbers are all that flashy. Touchdowns might be a little high. I think everybody I give touchdowns to is ends up a little high. I think I'm just an optimist that way. Um, wow, like 20, I didn't have him at 26 touchdowns. I had him at 23. Yeah, I think. Didn't we talk about that with the other one too, where I had like everybody was just like jacked up with touchdowns. Yeah, man, I've got him throwing 18 interceptions. So I, I see him making the rookie mistake. So, I mean, if he runs numbers like you've got him here, he might be the rookie of the year. No, because I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure I got uh, – who did I just – I don't remember. Lawrence Fields. No, yeah, I don't running know. Running back. It's usually nothing but those. But yeah, Zach anyway, Wilson, so. I think uh, – actually, it, I'll probably end up tweaking these here and there anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, but – 
I could very well see his touchdowns go down and his interceptions go up. But I do like he's got a little bit of rushing upside, like not too much, but I don't think he'll have to run all that much. I mean, I do got him for 109 attempts, but I think that offensive line is going to be really good and it's going to make this team a lot better than it has been in recent years. Ryan, you got an opinion on Zach Wilson? Because I've got one on Mac Jones. All right, yeah. So last season, the Jets as a team, I mean, 3,100 passing yards. I think Zach Wilson, they've updated, they've upgraded their team a lot. So I think 3,800 is not, not too far off. I think that's definitely plausible. Um, with rushing as a team, they only rushed for 1,600 yards last season. So... The, I, I think the rushing predictions might be a little high, but I could be wrong. Um, but I think Zach Wilson will be an upgrade, and they've they've changed a lot with their team. So I, I think he could be good, due for a good season. I don't know if Zach Wilson is essentially an upgrade. But no, I, I think he's the team, like the, the line. and Right. I, I believe he looks like an upgrade over Sam Darnold just because this regime did – well, Adam Gase never does, and that's actually gave his quarterback a chance. Right. <laughs> that's true. Like, offensive line and wide receivers. Like, it's just, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm a big fan of what they did with this team, and, I mean, you're not going to have to wait long to see how they compare to each other because he's playing Sam Darnold week one. Um, I think with that, too, I guess we can get into Michael Carter. Uh, for the Jets now too, right, Ron? Yes, I I really like Michael Carter as a sleep around pick. I've got him statted out pretty nicely. 245 carries for 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns. Like mm-hmm. for a late round quarterback or quarterback, late round running back that can get you that type of production. He, he could win. He could win you fantasy uh, games and seasons even. Are you saying when it's my turn, I should be picking Michael Carter? (laughs) Uh, I think round five in a dynasty draft might be a little bit early. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, I'm not that much of a homer. Um, Yeah. So you actually have him statted out a lot higher than I do. Um, So I've got these running backs also statted out. You have two running backs statted out. I think they're going to have more of a running back by committee approach. So I've got Carter with only 700 yards and four touchdowns, Coleman at 300 yards, three touchdowns. And I think they're going to sprinkle Ty Johnson in there too. It was also uh, a little bit of a mystery coming in from last year, but he did have a hundred yard game. I have him at 150 yards and a touchdown. So I think they will be somewhere above the thousand yard mark, 1,150 yards, but I think they're going to be passing a lot more because their secondary is absolutely horrible. They're going to get behind early in games and they're going to have to throw the ball a lot. And that's going to lead to Zach Wilson having high yards and high interceptions next year. Well, yeah. an overall successful year, I think. So what I do, what I do, and I mentioned this in the, with the last breakdown we did, I generally just been trying to set out people who I think might actually have like either fantasy relevant games or just enough work to take away some fantasy relevance. Mm-hmm. So I kind of, I, I don't go too deep. I don't want to stat out every single player on every single team. I would never get through all that. Yeah, that could be a little bit challenging. <laughs> and I think with that, we can move on to their wide receivers too, unless JJ or Ryan have an opinion on uh, Carter. No, I, I mean, I like Carter a lot too. Um, in a lot of my mock drafts and ESPN and other platforms, he winds up on my team just as a late, you know. Mm-hmm. You got those – players that have been around the league for a while around Carter and I'll take Carter 10 out of 10 times in the position that he's going. So definitely uh, think Ron's projected stats are possible a thousand plus yards. And I'm looking forward to watching him play in the preseason and see what he's got. Yeah. And you got to remember too, with Coleman too, he has a propensity of getting hurt at some point. So he may be the starting running back when the season opens up, but he might go down early. And then you're seeing these younger guys get in and that could be good for Michael Carter. He's also got the age, and I know everyone's like, oh, Coleman's coming from San Francisco, which is exactly where the head coach came from. But it's like they drafted a running back fairly early in the draft. Like, they that they did that for a reason. They brought in Coleman just in case they couldn't get the run, a running back in the draft. They didn't mm-hmm. get one they wanted. So I think they ended up getting one they wanted. He was, what, third round? 
fourth round. Fourth round? Oh, yeah, we got him in the fourth round. Good value, I think. Dude, I love our draft this year. I think it's going to be a great year for. And not draft. to mention the stuff they did with the offensive line. I know I keep bringing it up, but it's probably one of the most improved offensive lines in football. Maybe I'm just a little bit salty that the Giants didn't do that type of stuff with their offensive line. But hey, early in free agency, I didn't think we were going to. I mean, we whiffed on a bunch of guards, brought in nobody, and I'm just like, what are we doing? And then I'm hearing some very prominent Jets podcasters say, just have patience. They're going to do something. And I love this offensive line now. I mean, the only yeah. place we have questions is guard, but we've got four guys who are competing for the spot, so I'm fine with it. Yeah. Um, All right. So we'll, we're deep at the next position. We're going into the wide receivers. Yeah. Yeah, your wide receivers. Uh, I just don't know who's going to be the breakout guy. You know, without no, you know, without knowing who Zach Wilson wants to target, well, I have Corey Davis standing out as the most targeted guy, but that that could turn out not to be true. Like what do you have, Matt? 693 yards on the season? Yeah. I got him at 99 targets, 60 catches, 693 yards. There's one place where we have a huge difference in the yards and who's gonna Elijah do it. Elijah Moore. It's absolutely Elijah Moore because he looks like a beast coming out of camp. And I think he's gonna have something like nine hundred yards and six touchdowns this season. I don't think he'll hit that thousand Darzen yard mark because there's a lot of mouths to feed at wide receiver here, but I think he's going to be fantastic. Um, so more just his scouting report wasn't he? You know, didn't he play a lot of slot in college? Are the Jets going to throw him in the slot, or are they going to keep Crowder there and move him outside? What do you think, Joe? I think they're going to move him around a lot. Um, Crowder, I think, will come in as the Wiley veteran, but I think eventually he will see to more. Um, I think he's there just for his experience. And someone goes down. They saw what happened last year when they had four really average, below average wide receivers, and all of them went down when we were playing with the Smith brothers, Jeff Smith and some other Smith I never even heard of. So they absolutely refused to do it this, this year again. Yeah, Vincent Smith too. I mean, they have Cole, who is also kind of uh, an outside receiver too, is actually playing over Denzel Mims, who is looking at potentially a breakout year too. So they have a ton of weapons here. But just you keep hearing things about Elijah Moore this offseason. I think they're going to move him around and use him as a weapon. I think he might be our punt returner too. So here's honestly, I'm statting all these wide receivers out, right? And I'm thinking to myself, I wish I could just put wide receiver one, wide receiver two, wide receiver three, wide receiver four, because any one of these guys, I believe could finish in any single one of these positions. Yeah, I agree with you. You know what I mean? Like they're all, none of them talent wise are at this point heads are, you know, far and away better than any of the other one. Like it could be Corey Davis that finishes with the 99 targets. It could be Denzel Mims, Jameson. It could be any single. I, one I of don't them. think, I don't think Corey Davis will be the target hot. He'll be the red zone target for them. So he'll be the one getting a lot of touchdowns. So I think consistently from a week to week basis, if you draft Corey Davis later, he's going to be their number one, but he's going to be the one with the touchdowns. Like I could see him also having a 900 yard season too. Like, I don't think there's any 1000 yard receivers in this group, but I think there's a bunch of receivers that are going to produce between that 600 to 900 yard range. Which and, is great for a football team. Yeah. And I think the <laughs> tight end position is going to get left in the dust. I don't think they're going to do anything with it this year. Yeah. As you can see, I think I got, I got herned in at 500 yards. I don't even have him at that. No, what do you got him at? What I uh, I saw that report that came out on uh, Herndon that he was having trouble grasping the new playbook, and they started giving Croft reps instead of him. I think Croft will end up being the starter. So I don't even think maybe maybe three hundred yards if he gets in. I don't even know if he will. I'll just switch him if I have to. <laughs> Literally, when I'm doing projections, like especially with teams like this where nothing is super set in stone it's not like you're statting out Devonte adams here you know what i mean mm -hmm. like Devonte adams you know he's getting 32 percent of the work share in the passing game like right. that's what he's getting and we still but, haven't even talked about denzel mims who's going into his second year too i mean right, who he's looking to have a break massive out breakout yeah so i don't know just wild and uh for the only thing left to really talk about with this team for fantasy is Stay away from their defense. It's going to be absolutely atrocious this year. They're going to get pressure on the quarterback, but they are going to get passed on quite a bit this year. So just remember that. <laughs> someone's, someone's being yelled at in a chat that was just made uh, on here. That would be me. 
think it might be your pick in our dynasty draft. All right, then we'll move on to another team in our AFC Eats breakdown so I can make that pick then. All right, we're going back to Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not far from three of us. Really far from where JJ is right now. <laughs> Western yeah, New York those. here. Buffalo, they got that quarterback extraordinaire who had a super good week or year three breakout in Josh Allen. Mostly because of his rushing ability, but was a hell of a passer last year also. I got him statted for 4,700 yards and 35 passing touchdowns along with 440 rushing yards. Yeah, so Josh was uh, – he was my uh, number one pick in the dynasty draft here, so I'm hoping he has a season like that. And uh, <laughs> if he's – I don't see why he couldn't. They, uh, you know, they added Emmanuel Sanders who, you know, he's just a savvy veteran. He's not someone that knocks your socks off. But Gabriel Davis has a lot of upside coming in this year. And, uh, you know, this – the line is exactly the same. I, there's no reason why he can't repeat what he did, especially with an extra game. So I, I like Josh Allen's outlook on this year. I do too. I think he could honestly be the number one QB this year. Um, just look at him for fantasy football. They're going to heavily lean on him too. This running game struggled last year. It might be a little better this year, but I think it's still going to struggle. I sat at him out somewhere – at 4,900 yards, 38 touchdowns, and six rushing. And, I mean, he had 45 touchdowns total last year. So, this is something he could absolutely do with the extra game. We both had six rushing touchdowns. We're so smart. Genius. You, you had a few more passing touchdowns than I had, though. Yeah, I think he's going to have a very good year, and I don't see him fading off. I mean, 35 is still a really good year for passing touchdowns. But. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you mentioned the running backs. Ryan, do you want to say anything this episode, or are you just a pretty face? Oh, well, you know. We're just like are you there. just waiting till the Patriots? I mean, <laughs> we'll, no, we'll hand you the floor for that one. Kind of kind of off of what uh, Jay – and I don't stat out. It's it's a mixture of just laziness and <laughs> – well, just laziness, yeah. basically. You're a teacher. You're out of work for the summer. What, the, what else <laughs> you got to do with your life? <laughs> it's a sharp decline, man. Like, you work, 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 and then – just crash like my lawn's not even mowed i don't even i don't i go into hibernation i did my lawn this morning and i'm working i just i want to throw this out there now joe you just covered your entire camera with your phone um if we do go to video that is something you're not going to be able to do people don't want to see the back of your phone no problem i'll work on it it's going to be well, the longest, most ridiculous podcast ever. <laughs> I, I agree with you guys, though. There's, I, I think there's no reason to think that there's going to be much change in Josh Allen's game this season. Pretty much a lot of the same team going in, an extra game. So I see him doing more of the same. So I think um, we're all in consensus. He's just going to have a fantastic year. So what do we think the probability of him actually – Going back down to what he was before. So before this season, you know, he was like just over 50% pass completion, like 58%, I think it is. And he jumped all the way up to a 69% pass completion this past year. Do we think that was his coaches just finally got the best out of him and that's the new norm? Or do we think that he's actually going to fall back more towards where he was before? I honestly think he's ascended. I think he's going to stay up on that level, at least for the next few years. Okay. Yeah, Brian Dabbles did really well with him. I think he developed into a pretty good passer. Um, I think they really put him in a position for success. I, I don't think he's going to regress that much, if, if at all. I think he could. I think I had him ascend. regressing a little bit, but I think, like, instead of 69%, because 69% completion is astounding. Like, that's – not a number that a lot of people hit mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. You know what I mean? When you, when you have these quarterbacks make these like really good years and they're like over 70% completions, it's like people take note. Like there's a reason it's so By I brought him quarterback. You mean Drew Brees? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. He's, He's like the only one. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's what I mean. Like, so I brought, I think when I did his completion percentage, I think I brought it down to like a 67, 66. I think I can't remember exactly what I put in there, but. He's an interesting player from the different dynamics that he brings to other kind of fantasy leagues too. So as JJ was talking about earlier, he's got more value, I think, in a regular dynasty league um, where he's picked in the top three or four. And I'm getting yelled at to make another pick, which I will after I make my point, okay? And I think he's more of a late round pick in a snake draft format where you're still also looking at Patrick Mahomes and looking to take running backs early. So that's also an interesting dynamic with him as a player. Yeah. All right. So we'll move on to the running backs here. I'm trying to get everything moving along. We're doing horribly today. Um, <laughs> the jet so, lag, you know. Yeah, jet lag. Yeah, we all have jet lag. Um, it was really hard walking up the stairs to my room. Uh, so we'll get to the running backs. We got Zach Moss and Devin Singletary. And a lot of this is just how you feel about these running backs. Do you think? they're going to lean on Singletary or Moss. And do we think that the team can get better overall as a running team outside of Josh Allen? Uh, I have Zach Moss taking a step up, getting 221 of the carries for 994 yards and six touchdowns with 35 receptions on the year and 423 yards. Like, So uh, yeah, I I like Zach Moss. I mean, his schedule they the Bills have a pretty tough schedule, um, running back wise. They have a lot of bad matchups this year, but I I don't like what I saw from Devin Singletary. He fumbled a lot. You could tell that Sean McDermott was getting pissed off with him, and you know Moss is. They could have drafted the guy. They had plenty of opportunity to draft a running back, and they didn't. And I yep. think they have a lot of faith in him. Um, and they got to get the run going. They they asked Allen maybe to do a little bit too much, and that could factor into his regression. But um, I like Moss's outlook, and I think I'm higher on him than a lot of people are this year. I like yeah, so that I actually, pick you made, Joe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was good, I think, for the dynasty, too. I needed yeah. some more. Anyway, we'll talk about Zach Moss and get into that <laughs> later. Um, so I actually <laughs> like Zach Moss a lot this year, too. Um, I think he's per- – Virtually more talented than Devin Singletary. You just look like a running back with concrete in his boots. Um, I see Zach Moss having something like 900 yards and six rushing touchdowns this year. So he would be your third or fourth running back this year. Um, and Singletary, I think, will probably have something more like 500 yards and three touchdowns. You got to remember, Josh Allen takes a lot of those rushing touchdowns away from these guys, too. So that's going to really deplete their value, too. So do I necessarily like these guys as one of your top two? Absolutely not. But, um, I think Zach Moss has much more upside and a much lesser floor than, say, Singletary. Yeah, that's exactly – you had him standing out for almost exactly what I did, 900 yards and six touchdowns. It's like I was looking at your notes before this. Yeah, freaking cheater. Uh, we'll move on to the wide receivers. I have it written down right here if you want to see it. <laughs> everyone can see mine. And by everyone, I mean us. Um yeah, so, well, where am I going? The wide receivers, Stephon Diggs, Emmanuel Sandler, Sanders, Cole Beasley. Sandler. Well, I started reading Cole Beasley before I was done saying Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, Rob Schneider and, and he came too. Gabriel Davis, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stephon Diggs will obviously be the target hog in this thing. I got him for 164 targets, uh, 125 receptions for 1,270 yards and nine touchdowns. We got Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, What I like about Emmanuel Sanders is he's a very sure catch type of guy. Um, He's always been that type of receiver. So I think it takes him a couple weeks to like get integrated into the offense, but I think it really – gives Josh Allen something he didn't have last year with John Brown because John Brown was always injured and on and off the field. Uh, and yeah, he's, a, I mean, he's just a reliable guy. Yeah. So that's, I got him for 91 targets and 67 catches, but Cole Beasley out of the slot. Uh, he had actually quite a few fantasy relevant games last year. Uh, 
I remember going into last year, a lot of people were like, well, Josh Allen doesn't throw to the slot wide receiver. Like he doesn't throw underneath. He likes to just use his arm and bomb it down the field. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons his, all of his percentages went up because he learned, he learned how to throw it. He learned how to dunk it down and Cole Beasley was there and just was eaten in some games. So I really think he'll end up finishing as the wide receiver too on the team. I actually strongly disagree with you. I think he's going to be in for a very disappointing season, to be honest. And the reason why is because Emmanuel Sanders is there and he's a very similar wide receiver to him. I think he's going to end up eating up those targets. Well, Beasley, that's... too, has gotten uh, pretty political on social media. And there's yeah, people he's... saying that he may not even play this year. So, Yeah, I, I, I would just stay away from him. I didn't see that. It, maybe as a later on flyer, I would consider him, but yeah, so he's well, like yeah, I don't got completely anti-vaxxer and gotten political about it. So oh. we'll keep the politics out of the show, but he, it might affect his football career. So you have to talk about it at least a little bit. Mm. Um, but honestly, I think Stefan Diggs, I didn't really talk about him yet. So I'll get into him really quick. I can yep. see him being the number one wide receiver in all of fantasy football next year. Like I think he's going to have an absolutely fantastic year. He's obviously the horse of this offense that makes it go with Josh Allen there. I can see him having 1,650 yards, maybe off like 141 receptions and 10 touchdowns. I think he's going to have an absolute monstrous year next year. 1,650. You have him progressing a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, I just think this offense as a whole, like, just comes back just a little. I don't think I got everyone like anyone really. Plus, with Emmanuel Sanders being there, I think Josh Allen won't have to hyper-target and super depend on Stephon Diggs like he did last year. Another year of growth for Josh Allen. I don't know. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, What do you guys think about – What was that, Jacob? I was going to ask about these tight ends. I didn't – not really thrilled with either of them. I don't think they'll be on any of my teams this year. Yeah, no, I kind of think they're both garbage. I wouldn't even touch either of them. I don't got either one statted for more than 400 yards on the year, 350 even. I don't got one three for 350 on the year. Do you guys think Gabriel Davis could make any of the other two receivers more insignificant, Sanders or Cole Beasley? I was going to be real high on – I was going to be real high on Gabriel Davis if they didn't bring in Sanders. Um I guess there, there's still a pathway where uh, Davis could supplant both those guys and become the wide receiver too. Mm-hmm. Uh, in his work he did last year, he actually played really well. And I know a lot of other fantasy analysts were super high on him before free agency and everything, talking about how, you know, if he has that number two role, he could have a really good season. Agreed. Yeah, he really – kind of figured it out the second half of the season. He's a really fast athletic guy. He's bigger than people think. People think he's just a speedster, but he's like six foot two. So he could be a legitimate number two guy to Spawn Diggs for Allen. Um, definitely at the end of the draft, I would take Gabriel Davis over Emmanuel Sanders. Something to look at in our dynasty draft, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I should, probably should keep my mouth shut here. <laughs> <laughs> if not, you'll be forced to trade for him after. <laughs> But hey, I got Josh Allen, so I almost yeah. picked Diggs for the hookup. But oh, you almost yeah. have a pair. All right, so that's about done with the Bills. No, no, we are not done with the Bills. We have to talk about their defense. Why do we have to talk about the defense? Oh. Because potentially they're going to be a top five defense for fantasy next year. Nobody cares. Nobody. <laughs> Hey, Nobody I have cares. seen a Nobody defense, cares. it was five or six years ago, win a championship game. It was the Tennessee Titans defense who scored an insane amount of points in a championship game, and that's the reason why the guy won the title. So don't say defense doesn't matter. You at least have if to have you win a your title. If you win your title because of defense, you should turn your trophy in. <laughs> it's disgusting. It happens. I like it. So, I like it. And now since we're actually – since we really are done talking about the Bills because I refuse to talk about defense. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about – we'll move on. Ryan will be super happy. He'll probably start doing backflips. We're going to talk about the New England Patriots. We'll get this out of the way. 
there is no one on this team that's worth having on your fantasy roster outside of maybe Damian Harris. Agreed. All right. Their running back game is awful. Hmm. I'm talking about wide receivers and everything. <laughs> I would argue. Far. I I think I think it's very possible one of the tight ends is relevant for for fantasy. If one um, gets injured. As far as so, Ron, when you when you started this out, how many games were you assuming for Cam Newton? Just out of curiosity, did you like think about? Did you have a set number in mind, or? So I believe it was four. I don't have my notes. I Nine rushing my notes touchdowns in four games. No, 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 no. This is what I think is going to happen. This is what I think is going to happen. He will not be the starter after week four. But as soon as they get inside the 10 and the five oh, yard no. line, the Tim Tebow packages are coming. <laughs> yep, exactly. He is going to rob so many. He's going to have so many rushing attempts inside the 10 yard line. That's why he has 101 rush attempts and only like 434 yards, because I think his like yards per carry is only going to be like 3.7 because he's only got five yards to go. Okay. I was just, I was asking just to make kind of figure out yeah. what your stats were. Um, so I think I think if Matt Jones is starting by week four, I did see there being a little bit more passing yards. I mean, as a team last season, we didn't pass a ton um, and got – hold on, my thing's messing up. Um, wow, you haven't been participating this like entire episode. <laughs> if I had to give you the floor and you're not even prepared – so we had 31 passing 3100 passing yards last season. I think I think you will see that a little bit higher. Um I think the rush attempts might be a little high. I mean Damian Harris tied with Cam Newton last season in rush attempts at 137. Um we finished the season with 502 502 rushing attempts. I think you have him statted out for 574. Um I assume with Matt Jones if he it's all going to depend on how Matt Jones does cuz I mean, he's more of a pot to passer, so I could see us if he performs as well. I think we might see us do more, more passing and less running, maybe less than last year. I actually have a pretty bold prediction now that Ryan's gone over both of these quarterbacks, and I actually, the more I read up on it, the more I actually think it's going to happen too. Um, I think Cam Newton's only going to have one rushing touchdown and one passing touchdown for the entire season. And that's an insane stat. Yeah, because I think he's going to have a bad week one. And I think Mac Jones is going to end up coming into that offense. You hear a lot of smoke and fire about him picking up that offense. And then you're going to get the whole argument. Oh, Bill Belichick doesn't start rookies and stuff. Yeah, he never started rookies because he had Tom Brady for 20 years. Mac Jones fits that system. He's already learning to audible into that offense. If they come out and sputter and he's already picking up this offense, playing chess instead of checkers, I could see Mac Jones impressing Bill Belichick and actually getting into – a 16 game season and playing by week two. So Ryan, you'd be watching it with me in week two. I could really see it happening. Yeah. I, I, I don't um, think so. No, I go, think go that, ahead, JD. I'll tell you what I, I think, think Mac Jones is going to be statted out to after you give your review. I, uh, I think Cam is going to be in there for a little bit. I don't think Belichick's going to rush Mac Jones in and he's the type of coach that doesn't give a shit if there's fan and media pressure to do it. He'll just take him their starter, and he will not be phased. Um, their first four games, I think they play the Dolphins, Jets, Bucks, and Saints. And I, I really – I think they can win three of those games. The Saints game they play in Foxborough. Um, their defense should be back to form. They brought back Matt Patricia. I think they want to run the football with Harris. I think those numbers look – I think those numbers look right for Harris. And uh, I think they're going to play good defense and uh, – win some close games to start the year. So I think Mac Jones, if he does come in, it's, it will be off a terrible game from Cam where he's missing throws, throwing lame ducks. And, you know, we saw it a couple of times last year and it was concerning. You wonder if the shoulder's still there. And, but I just think that Cam's going to last a little bit longer than, especially one week. I think, you know, it'll be around the halfway point if you see Mac Jones. I heavily disagree with that just for the reasons why I think there actually is some fire with the smoke. I sat it out, Mac Jones. Um, and I think over a 16 game season, cause I think he will be starting my week two. 
I've got him at 218 yards a game, which I think is pretty decent for his level of play. Um, he kind of reminds me of a very, very young Chad Pennington, very accurate, kind of going to be very short intermediate passes. Um, 3,500 yards for the season, and I see him having 19 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. They're going to be careful with him, and I think he's going to be accurate. And I think his real weapon, which not a lot of people are talking about, is going to be Nelson Aguilar. He was excellent with the Raiders last year and filling in for him, and there's not a lot of competition for him in that wide receiving core. Honestly, he's going to have more competition from the tight end group of this team. Um, so I think there could be a little bit of value there. Yeah, see, that's what – like, the tight end, like – I think they're going to go 12 personnel, have two tight ends in there, run the football, and Cam loves his tight ends. I think that's part of why they added him, you know, to help him out too. I just think they're going to – I just don't see Jones coming in that early. You're saying that now for a rushing quarterback, but we've already seen the formula with the statue quarterback like Mac Jones coming in with two tight end sets too. So, yeah, you could read that either way. And if they come in and it's more of the bullshit from last year, I think they will bring in Mac Jones. I, I think he doesn't care if it's a rookie or not. If he can run the offense, they'll let him run the offense. That's true. But, I, but I'm right and you're wrong. So, Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I'm more on Joe's uh, page as far as the projection it's goes. I, it makes him sound better. Agree. Stop it. <laughs> How do you like that shit? Yeah. I, can see, I think Matt Jones will be closer to that 3,500 mark. Well, I mean, I think mine would be closer to that if he was playing more games, honestly. But the <laughs> fact that I have him not starting till like week five or six, I think it was like, obviously he's not going to, I think, honestly, I think the yards per game is very similar to what Joe has. We just have a different idea of when he's going to take over. So I think we're in line. It's only a few weeks, baby. It's, it's only a few weeks. That's what I mean. So if you add yeah. four weeks at 215 yards, it's another 800 yards. That puts me almost at 3,500 yards for him. Right. So, um, I think for the long-term haul, we all see Mac Jones in a similar light, though. I, I yeah. think even statistically, it's just when he's going to come in or not, which J.J. heavily disagrees that that's going to happen. And I think I actually believe you think Cam Newton is going to be fantasy relevant this year based on the 12 personnel packages. Am I right? He should be. I mean, he should be. He He's a threat to run. He's still jacked. He's still a beast. He still can run people over. And you saw him, how many rushing touchdowns he vultured last year. There's – what did he finish? Top 11, top 12 in quarterback points? Yeah, um, it was something like that. There's no something reason he shouldn't be. After throwing seven passing yeah. touchdowns. Pathetic. I know. Stupid Patriots. Um. So let's move on. We'll get in like uh, Damian Harris. I, I feel like he's the best running gr- running back in the group at the moment. Uh, I got him for 278 carries. I, I I think they, like you said, JJ, I think they run the 12 personnel and I think they try to pound the ball. I think they try to win. Bill Belichick is a smart coach. Right now he knows the best way for him to win, play awesome defense, which they can, and run the block or run the ball. They brought in two tight ends, both of which are decent at blocking way better than who they had on the field before last year and are both dangerous in the passing game. So you never know if they are actually going to run the ball or not. I'm still stuck on run the block where I imagine him running a block of cheese out there. (laughs) Maybe he will. I just just like a weird play action where he hands him a block of cheese, but still has the ball in the other hand. <laughs> anyway, back to, back to reality, JJ. What were you going to say? No, nothing. I'll just keep it garbage time instead of <laughs> analysis. JJ goes on a professional podcast and forget where he comes from. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I got it for 278 carries, uh, just under 1,200 yards and six touchdowns. Touchdown's going to be low because of what I believe about Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. Uh, and none of these running backs, I believe, will be super involved in the pass game. James White is there. He'll be the one with the bulk of the running back targets. Uh, I- I'm really not hyped about many people on this team if, for fantasy, if I'm being honest. I like Johnny. I've come I've around got, to Johnny. How many yards you got for Johnny on the year? 
Six hundred yards and eight touchdowns. I couldn't get there. I tried. I tried getting there. What did you say, JJ? I think that sounds right. I, I think. I mean, I think they just didn't have anybody at tight end last year, and that's why they spent so big on it because it hurt their offense. I think, and these guys both can play. John is great after the catch. I just. I, I just think that the Patriots are going to be a decent team this year. I think they're going to play really good defense and play smart and take care of the ball, run the ball. Their defense and, is and those type of offenses. And, they're, and those type of offenses, the tight end usually is a pretty big piece. So mm-hmm. they put a lot of money there. You got to make it worth the buck. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ron, why don't you have Johnu at those numbers? I just couldn't get there. With the amount of targets I think that tight ends are going to get, they brought in two, and I know everyone's going to say, oh, Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez. Stop it. Stop it. First off, Hunter Henry and Johnny Smith are not Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez. I'm sorry. First off, neither one of them has killed a guy. Like, <laughs> There's that. There's that. Secondly, How do you know? Neither one of them could probably jug or chug a beer like Ron Gronkowski either. And not only that, but neither one of them have Tom Brady throwing to them. Like, I'm sorry, but Tom Grady is what everybody calls the GOAT for a reason. So, like, everyone just assumes that they brought in these two tight ends and they're just going to be, like, extreme focused on in this offense, which it could happen that way. It really could. And if they only brought in just John U. Smith, his numbers would look a lot better because it'd be just him. I just don't believe that they're not going to use one of these guys. And if you're using two tight ends outside of those two years with Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez, that you're going to get substantial usage out of either one of them. You might get a good streaming week, but I just, I couldn't get there. Where the real value for both of these tight ends would be is if one or the other went down, because I think both could heavily produce if the other went down. I think Hunter Henry's – I've really changed my mind on him over the last few months because in our top ten episode, I really was leaning towards Hunter Henry being the better tight end in this offense, which actually didn't end up happening when I statted everything out. Um, I, I could see him still being somewhere around 450 yards and two touchdowns. I think he's a good tight end. He's a weapon that he's going to be out there, but I think John, who's going to be the receiving tight end in this offense. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I haven't set it out for the higher target share of the two, but mm-hmm. I just, you know, <laughs> the other one's going to get targets. Like, if, if these two went to any other team, if John U. Smith and Hunter Henry went to any other team, would you feel comfortable with either one of them? With John U., not yeah. necessarily Hunter Henry. No, no, no. I mean, with, with both of them going to the same team like they did right now. No. No. If, exactly. So why all of a sudden, just because they went to the Patriots, where they had Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez and had this two tight end system that worked, it doesn't automatically mean that that's going to work again. Uh, that's why, because the Patriots are the, really – I mean, I'm trying to think of another team that had – I mean, I guess, like, for a little bit, San Francisco with Vernon Davis and um, – why is his name slipping my mind? Delaney Walker. They had a couple decent years together, but as far as fantasy relevance – Maybe the Patriots are the only. Thing I'm not that saying that these maybe, guys aren't gonna... maybe the Eagles currently. I mean, they've kind of run two tight ends for a while. Yeah, I got it. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so you were happy starting either one of them last year? No, I didn't grab either one of them. I'm just saying that's a, they're, they're both more talented than their wide receivers. Let's not go there. Do you throw those two on that team? It's a much better situation than the two they currently have. Don't get me wrong, Godair is pretty good, but both Hunter Henry and the other guy that we have here are better than their tight end, so it would still be better. Listen, <laughs> but the fact is, like, if these two, if John Smith and Hunter Henry went to the Eagles this year, would you want to draft either one of them? Yes. JJ? Yeah, just for the, I mean, if, they're both they, talented guys. One of them is going to have numbers. 
It would be Johnny. I would draft Johnny. <laughs> you guys are crazy. You guys are. You guys are. Living John, up remember to last it. year when you tested me on a certain tight end? Yeah, worked out okay, well. Again, huh? again, that was Brady throwing to Gronk, who had and Wait the only minute. reason, and the only reason Gronk did anything is because OJ Howard got injured. Wait a minute, aren't? If I'm right, both of these podcasters finished in better rankings in our fantasy league than you did last year, that and you're taking both matter. of us on? That doesn't matter. <laughs> I won the sabotage mock draft. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right. We've uh we've gone on to this too long. We gotta get to the dolphins. Oh god, do we, we have gotta to? come up with a uh a side bets page or a site where we have all these uh bets and project you just don't want to go over the dolphins at all i couldn't find them <laughs> they disappeared there for a minute i forgot they were on the bottom of the list where they belong the, the fish the fish oh excuse me all right so we'll start with the dolphins we'll talk about their quarterback to a tongue of viola um I've got him taking a little bit of a step forward. <laughs> Already? I couldn't even get through my sentence? Oh, go ahead. All right. 386 completions for just over 4,000 yards. And what did I just do? Where the f- I, I just broke everything. Ron, do you pee sitting down too? <laughs> Sometimes. Um, depends on how late at night it is. Um, <laughs> all right, so I got him for just over 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns. I decided I wanted to lower that a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I think he has a little bit better of a year, but I don't think it's anything astounding. I have to see it first, I guess. I can't just go crazy it's a pretty good year for him with the three to one cuts on interception ratio yeah well i think he just i don't i know coming out of college you know everyone was like oh he's super accurate i mean tank for two it wasn't that long ago like when he was regarded as what was going to be the best prospect coming out of that draft like and everyone and was Joe always that crazy yeah um And everyone was talking about how, you know, accurate Tua was and all that. And so I thought, you know, I'd give him the props there. Joe shaking his head. What do you got? Keep going, and then I'll go over what I've got. That's pretty much it. A little over 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns. Well, I think your stats are absolute bullshit. He's not even going to finish off this year (laughs) as a starter because they're going to be drafting another quarterback this year. I think he's going to end up with more interceptions than he has touchdowns this year, and they're going to be bringing in Jacoby Brissett by week nine. So that's what's going to happen. I don't know. Don't, don't I, count I don't know. on Tua being I, good. Like you got you to gotta see it more, and people have been roasting Tua because at OTAs he threw some interceptions. So like, who gives a shit? You're supposed to throw interceptions in OTAs and see what works and what doesn't, so – I'm willing to give him a chance and uh, hope he can figure it out. And, you know, he came in so raw last year with no offseason, coming off a significant injury. You know, I think his teammates like him. He's got a real shot. He's got weapons on offense. There's really no excuses for him now. So, like Ron said, that I mean, I think that should be the mantra for Tua. You got to see more. Do you just bring his numbers up more? <laughs> no, I brought, him, I brought his touchdowns down. down two more. <laughs> I thought 28 was a better number. I look at it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't trust him at all. Believe it or not, I think I have more confidence in Daniel Jones than I do Tunga, to a Tunga Bailoa. I just don't like him. He's, he's someone I avoid at all costs. He's the kryptonite in our division. I, I don't have him sat out to anything you should be drafting, really. But it's not no, like I have him sat right. out as like a top 10 quarterback, but – to say that he's not going to be the starter all year, I think is a little, a little deep. All right. Well, when they're he, marching to Kobe Brissett, who was actually a pretty good quarterback out there halfway through the season because they have more draft picks coming up, get ready if for Brissette it. Brissett was a good enough quarterback. He would have thrived in the Indianapolis Colts offense that has a great offensive line, decent weapons. He, he wasn't could... that bad there. 
Right, he wasn't that bad, but he wasn't, but he wasn't that good. very good. He's better than Tua. <laughs> they were not out when Ratton got Philip Rivers, who was coming off one of his worst seasons ever. If Brissett was even feasibly type of good. Mm, that's not necessarily they, true either because Rivers had familiarity down. with the offense and the offensive coordinator there knew him and he had a good reputation with the head coach. That's why they got Philip Rivers. They didn't even bring in Tom Brady there. He, Tom Brady was offered that job, was thinking about that potentially having that job, and they said, no, nah, we'll go with Rivers. That's how much confidence they had in Rivers. I think it was right. just a circumstance of his situation. I don't think they didn't believe in Jacoby Brissett. I think that's just how much they believed in Rivers, which was – yeah, they believed in Rivers because at that stage of his career, coming off the worst career of his team, or career, worst season worst, of his career, yeah, there you go. I got it there. Uh, they believed he was better than Jacoby Brissett. Ron, did you not just hear me that Tom Brady wanted that job and they told him, no, we're good with what we've got, which was signing Rivers? Maybe because they did They really that. believed in Rivers for some Where stupid reason. Where did that report? Uh, actually, I heard that on the Pat McAfee show, I believe. Yeah, Tom Brady said, oh, I, I wanted to go there. And they're like, no, nah, we like this person more. He never. Mm-hmm. I don't think he ever actually said what team. I think they all just speculated it was the Colts. The Titans. Everyone said it was the Titans. I heard it was the Colts. Eh, See, it doesn't matter. Nobody, nobody Regardless. actually knows if that's Regardless, true. let's get back to the Tua conversation. I just don't think he's good. You don't think that this person that they spent a top – Five top six draft pick on they're ever even going to give one full season as the starter nope because they're going to see an absolute meltdown by him this season let's do a survey of uh pod mates here raise your hand if you think Tua will have more fantasy points than Zach Wilson well I can answer this one real quick hold on see exactly what I think <laughs> So I got Tua for 373 fantasy points, Zach Wilson for 357. So, yep, I got Tua having more. Oh, shit. (laughs) I like that little area where it shows, like, their fantasy points. That's a nice one. Ryan, you hate both of these teams being a fan of the AFC East. What do you think? I mean, I kind of hope they both suck a lot. (laughs) Um, In an ideal world, that's what I would go for. Um, I mean, I think, I think Tua's touchdowns are a little high. I mean, last year in 10 games, he got 11 touchdowns with five interceptions. Um, so I think his touchdowns might be a little high. The yards seem like it's definitely plausible. Um, but unfortunately, as much as I don't want to, I'll probably have to side with Ron. I think Tua will score more fantasy points than Zach Wilson. But it's not gonna happen. He's gonna get benched. But okay. I'm gonna. Joe just I'm gonna. Wait, wait. I'm gonna I'm channel my. Me. I'm gonna channel my inner Christian here. Joe, that opinion is trash. <laughs> you can think whatever you want about that take, but I'm over here talking on Mac Jones, who's on the Patriots. So what's that telling you? It's not like I've got some yeah. big disdain for the Dolphins. I just don't oh, think their quarterback's good, and we saw that in a few games last year where he just looked horrible. I, I just don't like him. Tom Brady looked horrible in games before. It's just he's a rookie. Look at Peyton yeah. Manning rookie numbers. You gotta get let these kids have a season. Yeah, well, especially when they have no off season. We're, we're not in the nineteen eighties, JJ, where you get five years like every other quarterback. They they make not, a decision on a guy. Man, you're you're not even giving him a whole year. You don't need to. He's trash. Blaine Gabbert okay. didn't get a full year okay. before they threw him Joe away. Burrow was trash. No, oh, he was fantastic. Well, he Look, his his end of the season numbers were not very good last year. You could see the talent, though. You can't see the talent with Tua. You couldn't see him. He barely played. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. All right, we'll see. And he was if coming you... up an injury. What we'll about see. Darnold's rookie year when he threw 17 touchdowns and 15 picks and had a sub-80 quarterback rating? You, do you think he was trash, or did you think I got to give him a little bit more? A little bit more because I saw the talent. You don't see the talent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, all right, all right. All right, we're moving on to the running backs. <laughs> this podcast is going to be so long, guys. So horrible. I'm sorry That's if you actually, actually listen right. all this way. Um, especially if you're a Dolphins fan and had to listen to all this. Um, all right, so I got Gaskin for 220 carries, 990 yards, eight touchdowns. Um, Malcolm, they brought in Malcolm Brown. Malcolm Brown is a very 
he's a good running back. And he always has those games where it seems like he's the featured guy. He's really good goal line wise. And I fear that they might use him more. I know they last year, they had a guy, they stuck with that guy, but I don't think they want to see their running backs getting injured every other game, which kind of happened last year. It seemed like they brought Malcolm Brown in for a purpose. So I think he gets 174 carries. Finishes with like 700 yards and has like five touchdowns. I actually like Miles Gaskins a lot this year. Um, you saw that when we were doing so much, our uh, making multiple. Yeah. Well, when we did the sabotage mock draft, I did end up picking him, and I do believe in him this year. You've actually got him. What was it? Statted out at 900 yards. Yep, 990 even. Just under. I've nine. actually got him having 1100 yards this season, um, and that's at a 4.0 yards per carry average. And I think he'll have uh, five touchdowns rushing and two passing. The reason why I don't think it'll be more passing is I think Malcolm Brown will get that uh, passing work on third down. So he might have like four, but yeah, I really do believe in him this year. And I think miles Gaston's going to have a good year. That's also because his quarterback sucks and they're going to run the ball instead. We're not going back to that. Let it go. We're done there, Joe. Moving on. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? Brian and JJ, what do you think of their running back situation? I like, uh, I like Gaskin more than Brown, obviously. Um, Brown is not a guy that wows you. You know, he's just kind of a pro's pro. He knows what he's doing. He's not the fastest guy. He's not that explosive, but he knows how to hit a hole and get four yards. So I, I don't think he'll have 700 yards this year. I think last year I just checked. He had like just over 100 carries and just over 400 yards. I think that's probably right. He'll come in to spell these guys a couple of drives a game, but I, I think right now Gaskin's going to run out there the first drive of the season and and be the guy that uh, gets the majority of the work. So I would take Gaskin. Pretty. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. And yeah, yeah. I could see but the potential I, where he gets over a thousand yards. Also, like Joe said, so I think he's a very safe mid-round pick for snake drafts. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Ryan. You gotta unmute yourself. <laughs> he's, he's got. We got. Some, or, I don't know what's going on over there. Or, he, he doesn't have a headset on. on. He, he's this recording guy, his next MMA show. That's this, what's going on. This guy literally just took his headset <laughs> off and was like, ah, "I'm done with this game. <laughs> Maybe later we'll we'll do some podcasting." He, he, he took his puppy upstairs, and then there was a little dog fight. So there was. It was oh. a there for a minute. Um, but he running a Michael Vick pit bull ring over there or something. Wow, that was an old reference. I like it. <laughs> um, I I like Miles Gaston. Um, and at least one or two of my leads, I actually ended up picking him up off a of waiver wire last year, I think. And um, I was a big fan of him. I really liked what I saw out of him. Um, so I definitely think he's going to be their main guy. And uh, I do. I really like him. And to if if he's sitting there in the later rounds, someone to have on your bench, it's definitely not a bad bad pick. So we like right. one running back in this backfield, though. Well, yeah, Ryan, maybe if uh, Chad ever makes his goddamn pick, you can uh, <laughs> you can pick him. Here. Wow, the putting him on blast on the great. podcast. That's right, Chad. Listen, you're, listening. you're taking too damn long. Welcome to the soft- garbage time fantasy league <laughs> podcast. There, Chad. He's had a softball game. He gets done around seven seven thirty. <laughs> That's such a Chad oh. thing to play softball. That's such a cas- <laughs> yeah. softball game. They're chas- or casual. In between innings, you can definitely make a pick in a dynasty draft. <laughs> I like how we gave everyone eight hours to make a pick, and if they go over like three minutes, like, <laughs> <laughs> get over yeah. your life and make the pick. No pressure, but there's pressure. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to get to the Dolphins wide receivers. Yeah. So they got uh, Devontae Parker, Will Fuller, who they just brought in, and Jalen Waddell. Um, currently have Devontae Parker set out as the most receptions. I keep thinking about it. And I think the only reason I put him at more was because Will Fuller is suspended for week one. Um, That's it, though. Yeah, I know. It might change. I Like I said, I kind of – you know, mm-hmm. it, I'm still I'll still play with these here and there. If I really see something I don't like, I can fix it. 
I, what do you have him set it out at? 728 yards. So actually, I've got Fuller. Yeah. yeah. So actually, I've got uh, Will Fuller. I think statted up more towards the 900, 1,000 yard season, even with the one game suspension. He's shown over his past he, that he can be successful in a variety of categories. And if he stays healthy, I think he can hit that number, even with the trash ass play of his quarterback there. Um, and Devonte Parker too, just showed that he doesn't play well with Tua. He just doesn't have the chemistry with him and off season might help that if it ends up going down the pipeline, like Ron and JJ thinking he'll be better this off season, but I just don't think he's going to create that chemistry with him. So I think Parker is going to have more like 650 yards and Will Fuller is going to be the number one in this offense around 900 yards. And I think Waddle's more of a 500 yard two touchdown year. Um, I think it'll take a little bit for him to build. I this I I don't want Parker or Fuller on my team. I would no. take Waddle. Waddle had the uh, chemistry with Tua at Alabama. They hooked up on a lot of deep balls. Um, you know, I, I just think there's a ton more upside with Jalen Waddle. I think Parker is probably. I don't know what his contract looks like, but I can't believe the Dolphins are happy on their return with him. He's just never taken that job. They've wanted him to be that guy for so long, and he hasn't done it. Fuller's on a one-year deal. I think Waddle's the future down there in Miami. So I definitely would uh, – I'd take Waddle over either of these guys. Let me one-up you. I want none of them on my team. Well, yeah, I, I mean – I think what JJ is saying is, like, if you're going to take one late, because most of these guys are going to go a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Waddle it has the most upside. And he's being drafted, okay. I believe, the latest out of all three of them. So you could take a late-round shot on him and have the potential of him being the number one in this offense and having week-to-week -week fantasy relevance. Like You got to remember, though, like Will Fuller player. gave number one wide receiver games, even with the Texans, when he was healthy. He, he really could be a star in that offense if You're right. two yeah, is going to be as good as you guys well, claim yeah. he is. It's it's basically a contract year for him again, too. He's on a one-year contract. And it's not – you keep saying as good as we have two. It's not like we got – I got two of statted out of, like, this monster year. <laughs> I got two up in, like, my top five quarterbacks, and, like, he's probably down at, like, quarterback 20. Eight, between 18 and 22 right now. like Still too high. <laughs> I just don't Joe, think must like gonna... bad... Joe must have had like a bad piece of pizza with pineapple on it or something. He hates Hawaiian, everything Hawaiian now. So yeah. I, I don't know what it's doing. That's not true. The Hawaiian offense in college is fun to watch. <laughs> University of Hawaii. All right. So what do we think about Mike Gesicki, their tight end? I like him. Had a lot of decent games last year. But that was mostly with Fitzpatrick. Once Tua came in, those games kind of spread themselves out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Ryan, I mean, what I do got you him, think about Kasicki? Because you had him last year. And 728. Was it 66 and 728? Yeah, yeah that's what I got him sad for. No, I really liked Kasicki last year, but weren't they like switching in another tight end like on and off last season? Like, I feel like that's what – because I remember it pissing me off, but I can't – I can't remember what they were doing. I had Adam Shaheen, former Bear, one of the worst draft picks ever, and uh, Smythe they have too. They kind of mix them in. Yes, which was yeah, annoying. The 60 could get cold, and it was frustrating. You're right, Ryan. Um, so I that would be like my biggest complaint with DeCity is not his play as a player, but just how the coaching staff chose to use him at some points throughout the season and plug in other players to kind of steal from him. But if they if they lean on him more, I'm 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 beta on Mike Gesicki. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree with you too, Ryan. I've got him actually set it out to be the back end of the top ten uh, tight ends of the league this year. I think he'll have 760 yards, maybe 88 receptions, and seven touchdowns. I think he's going to be the security blanket for Jacoby Brissett the second half of the year. <laughs> nope, I'm not doing it, Joe. I'm not doing it. <laughs> You're not dragging me in. We got to end this freaking podcast. I think we've been recording yeah, we for like an hour board. and a half. Like, <laughs> oh. all your fault, Joe, because you just have to have such horrible takes about everything. Um, yeah. I was the one that actually hit on my takes last year. One. You got Devontae Adams. Good job. And Julio. You were right. Devontae Adams, 
finished as a top two wide receiver. That was a real good hot take you had there. Get us out of here. Tell me what to do. Um, yeah, so go visit our website at uh, www.garbagetimeff.com. I forgot what it was there for a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, follow our Instagram at Garbage Time Fantasy Football. Leave us messages. We didn't have a single voicemail for this episode, Christian. Um, Christian slacking. He's slacking. Must be he's, he's, not used to us doing, he's not used to us doing to it to a, a week this yet. So yeah. he'll get there. He'll catch um, up. He'll catch up. Uh, anybody else, though, you can leave us voicemails at our website, www.garbagetimeff.com. You can leave us messages on our Instagram at Garbage Time Fantasy Football. Um, go, we have our stuff on YouTube at Garbage Time Fantasy Football. You can leave us comments there that we can answer on the show. Join the heckling fandom. Join the heckling fandom. That's right. Um, like I said, our we our next one might have video with it, so make sure you go subscribe to YouTube and hit the little bell icon so you get notified when we put stuff up there. And don't yeah. forget about Ryan's MMA show. Oh, Ryan's MMA show. Garbage Time presents the MMA podcast. Um, yeah, so go listen. Spotify, Apple uh, Google. Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Simplecast. I have radio podcast. Leave us the five star review, please. And we appreciate it. And we'll give you a thank you, maybe, on, on the podcast. Holy crap, that was a long episode. Yeah. <laughs> We've been. We, we've been on this Zoom thing for an hour and 49 minutes. So get us out of here. Yeah, I'm going to push them up. <laughs>